Well, there's so many things. You wonder if you're going to be able to live like up in, to the Belgium, reputation that you feel that it should have. You wonder if all of that potential is there. And you know, when you want to create, you want to say something. You know, it comes from in here. It really does. That I, I take book. <laughs> I'm just going to date it and <laughs> sure. sign my name. Well, tied to the questions that you got today, Hunky, from the audience, something came to my mind also, which was, were there, were there people in the group who we don't remember as writers who were trying to write? Many. Yes, it, unfortunately, uh, many of them, you know, grew weary of it and gave it up. Uh, one of the saddest cases, I think, is one that we all have heard of, and that was uh, Elise Cowan. You know, she committed suicide. She just couldn't take it any longer. And some of the people that supposedly were most concerned with things that were meaningful to her uh, were the very ones that uh, kind of ignored her, please don't do this, don't do that, you know, and they just went right ahead and did it anyway, about family and throwing that. Yeah, well, oh well, they, she was in many, many ways. Did people really think that they were beats in those days? I mean, the writers and people at well, Times Square. There's a lot of controversy about that, you can well believe. Uh, I, for one, never liked it. And I still don't. But uh, uh, I gave them a feeling of identification. Made them feel as though they were communicating with others like themselves, so to speak. I'll give you a little example of how these things can work. Uh, I was waiting to be released from prison, and I had gone up for parole. And, you know, they, they have a, a really stupid procedure, as you can well imagine. But uh, one of the things is that they you know, subject you, after you say you've been in prison for five years, your maximum calls for eight years. Now, you're not eligible to go up for parole or even the possibility of a parole until a certain number of years have passed. Now, that's no guarantee you're going to be paroled, but at least you're, we'll, we'll talk about it again is what it comes down to. And uh, uh, what they'll do, instead of, well, for very good reasons, instead of telling you at the time that you're going to have to bring them another year, you know, you've geared yourself to hoping against everything that you're going to be able to make it out. Of course, your better sense tells you that, no, man, it's too soon. <laughs> you know, you've got to face it. Uh, when they get back into their cell, there's an envelope with the number of months they must bring before. There's even a possibility of them looking toward the streets. And uh, they did this to one guy before they got around to the envelope, <laughs> the note. <laughs> and he just stepped over to the desk and grabbed a uh, cut glass or a glass uh, uh, paperweight, <laughs> let the guy have it over the head, you know? Well, give me another five years, because that's what it feels like. You've already gone through the, the grief of, you know, trying to explain in a human way a little of what went down, you know, and now they want more from you. What they're usually looking for is some angle to the case that hasn't been, you know, hasn't been worked out yet, and 
the upper echelon is demanding, you know, further information. See if you can't get him to say something about this, that, the other thing. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty, pretty cut and dry, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's how it works. And, uh, you know, you suddenly to discover that you've got to bring them another, in a manner of speaking, another uh, two or three years, you're certainly in no mood for that. And there's other little things that creep into it. Very, very, very tough. Well, it, it's a shame because, you know, the people that it should reach, that is by that I mean people that should read that line again, mm -hmm. and try to figure out what it means, are the people that are less apt to, you know? They just ignore it completely. Well, they want to know some of the, you know, some of the more ludicrous happenings or, you know, something that carries a little scandal or nonsense with it. It's no, it's very little concern for the human mm -hmm. element, see? Mm -hmm. Which is what you were so good at expressing. In well, I thank you, but I don't think I did a very good job of it. I really don't. You mean with the writing that you did? Yes. Why? What kind of writing would you have wanted to do? Oh, Longer no, things? I'm, or? I'm not saying what kind. I think if I had had it to do over again yeah. and knew just a little bit more than I did when I started to try to write, uh, I would have paid more attention to, the, to academia. <laughs> In what respect? Well, <laughs> I just like the satisfaction of knowing that when I write a word, it's the word that I should use, oh, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you think you get that from academia? I think that you can. Uh -huh. I think you stand a better chance. You stand a better chance of being understood by the very people that you're trying to, trying to reach. Yeah, yeah. So you always had a thought of reaching people. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Some people don't. I mean, they write for themselves or they well, write for a select group of friends. Well, you know how that goes. Yeah. But you come from a different generation. Also. Yes, I do. Yeah. Who did you most want to reach with your writing? Who was it most? The world. In <laughs> everybody in general? Yes, everybody in general. It was obvious that everybody was pretty unhappy, that the world was in a pretty messed up condition. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. and uh, why not try to get rid of something? If you're going to do anything, you might as well, you know, try to do it with some meaning, some significance that's good to you. I'm not saying that it has to be the accepted thing, but it, let it give you a little lift, a little push. That's where your God lies, I think. You know, if we're going to talk about God, I think that's where. We look at each other, we, we exchange, <laughs> what, vibrations, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I really believe that. I think that, you know, it's, uh, I don't think it's absolutely essential. There are other ways of doing it also, I'm sure, but that's one For good. For you, that was your Yes, way. that was what I wanted yeah. anyway. And I think it certainly seemed to give, uh, well, some people, a better outlook on things and mm -hmm. so many people, you know, that, that were just trying to get even or to prove that they were as good as Joe or mm -hmm. maybe they... Okay, did you, you knew people who had been to school, who had studied writing, you know, like Ginsburg oh, yes. or, or Burroughs. Oh, but did, I, did yes, I knew those people many years before I knew Ginsburg. Well, I'm just wondering, the question, that came to my mind was whether you thought they had an advantage because they had a different education than you did. No, I wasn't. Uh, at that time, mm -hmm. no, I didn't feel that way mm -hmm. particularly. In fact, <laughs> in some instances, it was just the opposite. <laughs> well, they seemed so, sort of bound up and tight and afraid right. Right. To, to venture out mm -hmm. for fear they'd be laughed at for fear they'd reveal the, the inner man, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. That's what most of us are sort of hung up with, I think. Yeah. The, uh, you know, 
Uh, that's where paranoia, I think, comes from. And we're, we start right out with it from the jump. <laughs> we don't any more than open our eyes and, well, I wonder, I don't know what we think, but, you know. But these stories that you write about, were they stories you talked about with, with people? When Some you, people, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. For, that, for example, that uh, 1938 story, I was so amazed at that. Mm. You know, here I had been feeling very sorry for myself all day, and yeah. it was late. I didn't know where I was going to really be able to get a flop for the night. And mm. in those days, New Orleans mm. was, well, uh, you know, uh, what do I, very alive with. Mm -hmm rooms you could get for 50 cents for the night. They were comparatively clean in most instances. And uh, I tell you, when you're, when you're tired and weary and you don't know where you're going or if you're going to get there, well, you know, it's uh, kind of nice to know that there's a, a 50 cent room. Yeah, absolutely, you have 50 cents. Sure. Yeah. So uh, naturally, I, I that and other stories that I've written about. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful story. That's I like that story. Yeah. Yeah. I like and it too. You, you sort of fade into the corner of that story. That's right.